Hello everyone and welcome to Smart Code. Let's try to understand CSS box model. CSS box model is a fundamental concept and understanding how it works will help you write CSS more efficiently, create layout and align items. So in this tutorial, we are going to take a proper look at CSS box model. Are you ready? Let's get started. So every HTML element renders as a rectangular box by the browser. As you can see on your screen, how a heading element with some content renders and become a rectangular box. So this is how HTML elements renders by the browser. Then comes CSS and CSS adds up three dimensions to that box. And these dimensions are heading, border and margin. So the CSS changes the original box by adding three dimensions. And when the dimensions are added to the box, we actually get a box with four components. So a box with these four components that you see right now on your screen is called CSS box model or simply CSS box. Now the question is why CSS adds these three dimensions? And a simple answer is CSS is a language used for style. And by adding these dimensions, you can style a box in different ways. For example, you can increase the padding to make your element looks bigger. You can add border around the element and you can align the elements with different spacing between them using the margins. The impressive thing is that CSS provides a rich collections of properties that you can use to adjust padding, border and margin. And you will experience some of them in a couple of minutes. Let's now move on and start messing with the CSS box model. This is gonna be interesting and I'm pretty sure you will like it. So I have an HTML document with no content in it, but we have two presentational tag in it. The first one is the HTML tag, which is the outermost tag. And the second one is the body tag. And when I say presentational, I actually mean they appear in the browser. Even though we have a head section in the document, but head section has no appearance in the browser. So let's now start with the HTML and the body tag. And you will see practically how these two tags transforms into the CSS box. I want you to render this empty page into the browser. Now right click somewhere in the browser window and choose inspect. It will open the dev tool. Now in the DOM section of dev tool, you see your HTML document. I want you to select HTML element. Then scroll down. And in the styles menu, you will find a box. In fact, a CSS box. This is the HTML tag, which is now has transformed into a CSS box and in the middle the blue area is basically the content area and the content area has a size which is consists of width and height and here you just see default values because we have no content inside the body tag and you can clearly see your HTML tag is now surrounded by padding border and margin and the values to padding border and margin are not set and that's why you see dashes in the box. Once you set the values, you see them here in the box. Now I want you to select the body tag and there you see another box. The body is also transformed into a CSX box and right in the middle, the blue area is the content area. The height of the body is zero right now that you can see on your screen. And this is because there is no content in it. And then we are padding and border with no value, but the body has by default margin of eight pixels around it and this is the default value that you can change and we change it most of the time okay so now you have seen both the boxes and it's gonna make more sense when you fill your body with the content and that is what I'm going to do now I will put a lot of text in the body and assign different background color to the HTML and the body just to make them prominent so in the body I want a lot of text Let's say 500 words and two paragraphs in the end.
and in the CSS file, I'm going to target HTML and body tag and assign them different colors. Okay, it looks good now and I'm going to render this page again in the browser. And there you see, the HTML document in the background has got coral color and the body in the foreground has got light blue. Now in the body box, you can see the size of the body is now changed. If you remember, the height of the body was zero previously. Now we have a height which is set to 1376 pixels. And we see the HTML document in the background because body is holding a margin of 8 pixels to its parent tag. And HTML is a parent tag. Body is inside the HTML. So the margins in CSS are transparent. And if I remove the margin from the body, then our body will cover the whole HTML document. And you won't be able to see HTML coral background. Let me show you an example on that. Now, in our CSS file inside the body selector, we will say margin 0. Assigning 0 to the margins property simply means remove the margins from the body. Let's now render the page again. And there you see, the body has covered the whole document and the HTML tag, or you can simply say HTML layer, now has totally gone in the background. Let's now reverse the changes and put margin back and we will talk more about the margins in a few minutes. Okay, at this point, I think you might have some idea how CSS box model works. Now, in order to fully understand CSS box, we need to work with these dimensions and we will start with the border dimensions. We will apply borders and we will see some variations. I choose border first because border is a kind of frame around the box and once we have a border around the box we can better understand padding and margins so let's check it out and apply some borders okay now i am inside my css file and i am to give body tag a border so we will mention border property first and we'll say the border size is 10 pixels and border is solid filled and the color is white so this property is gonna set a border around the body. Now, like I said before, CSS provides a wide range of properties that you can use to manipulate border padding and margins. If you just look into the border, you will find a lot of different properties and the variations that you can create using border properties. Now, as you can see, the pop-up window is filled with the border properties that you can use to style a border in different ways. And we are going to look into some of them in this tutorial. Okay, so now we have applied border to the body element. And if you remember, we have two paragraph tags in the document and we are going to give them also a border. Now save the file and render the page again in the browser. Now there you see a nice white border is applied to the body and our paragraph tags got also a red border. Now if you select the body tag and look at the CSS box, you will see border property is now set to 10 pixels. Now select the paragraph tag and there you see the paragraph now has a border of 2 pixels around it. Okay, let's now make some variations. Let's say I don't want full border around the body. I just want to apply a border at the top and a border at the bottom. So I can do that using CSS top and the bottom property. Let's see how. In the CSS file, I will call border top property and border bottom property. Now here you can even assign different styles to each border.
Now save the file and check the result in the browser. And here you see our body now only has a border at the top and a border at the bottom. When you look at the CSS box, you will find out only the top and the bottom border properties are set now. The left and the right borders are now removed. You may now have realized at this point the advantage of these dimensions added by the CSS. We are able to put border to any HTML tag just because of the CSS box model. If CSS wouldn't have added these dimensions, we wouldn't be able to put borders around the tags. Okay, now you know how border dimension works. Let's now talk about the padding dimension. Before we start talking about the padding, I want to reverse the changes and apply full border back to our body tag. Let's just increase the size of the border to 20 pixels. Okay, a padding is an empty area between the content and the border. Let's take a look at our document. You will find no space between the content and the border, and the content touches the border, as you can see. And our box diagram confirms it that we haven't applied any padding yet. So let's apply some padding to the body tag, and after that, we are going to study the result. So for applying padding, we use padding property, and let's say we want a padding of 30 pixels. Now save the file and check out the result in the browser. And there you see, a padding of 30 pixels is applied to the body tag. And the color of the padding area is the background color of the box. And if you want to give a different color to your padding, then you can use some other properties like background clip and box shadow. But there isn't any direct property that you can use to add different color to the padding. So like border property, padding also have a lot of different variations. Let's say if I only want to give a left padding to my body tag, so I can use padding left property. Let's give it a value of 40 pixels. Now save the file and render the page again. Now we only have left padding in our document. Our text is shifted 40 pixels to the right. I hope you understand now how padding works. It's a very useful dimension and a very common use of padding is creating navigation buttons. Let me show you an example on how padding dimension help us in the creation of buttons. Let's now reverse the changes first and apply full padding to the body tag. And in the HTML document, set up to anchor elements. And this is how anchor elements look in the browser. Let's now apply some CSS. Apply a background color and a text color to our anchor elements. And there we see some changes. Now we only need to add some padding in order to make them look like rectangular buttons. And there you see two nice buttons. And we accomplish this result using the padding dimension, right? Last dimension that we are going to discuss now is margin dimension. And a margin, as you know, is a space around the box. And it is used to add space between the boxes. Let's now apply some margin first 
and then we are going to study the result. Give body tag a margin of 30 pixels and paragraph tag a margin of 40 pixels. Now as you render the page, you will see your body is now keeping a margin of 30 pixels to the HTML document. Now look at the paragraph element. So each paragraph is now keeping a margin of 40 pixels and you can see that clearly on your screen. So a margin is basically used to add extra space around the box and you can simply keep your boxes separated from each other using margins. Okay, so now we have reached to the end of this tutorial. And we discussed in detail what CSS box model is, how it works, what are the dimensions, and we practically looked into every dimension. And I hope now you have got a better understanding of CSS box model. Now, my last comment is that CSS box model applies to HTML block elements, and it's not fully applicable to HTML inline elements. And you can read more about it from the link I put in the description of this video. Now it's time to say goodbye and thanks for watching this video.